Okay, to cut the side, we're going to start with a couple of bar clamps and two uh, pieces of right angle aluminum. These are about an inch and a quarter, maybe an inch and a half wide on each side. And then I'm going to use a Japanese style flush cut saw. Uh, it has a very flexible blade. And then our wood block here. We're going to take about a 3 16 of an inch uh, slice off the very top of this block. I'm just going to make some marks at each end of the board. and then flip it over and make the same mark on the other side. Now you want to stand the board up and put one piece of the angle iron on each side. Then we're going to take our clamps and fasten the aluminum pieces where our marks are. Leave this first end loose so that we can raise the back end up and clamp it into place. Make sure that you're getting them right on the mark on each side. You also want to keep the clamp on the side away from you so that as you're sawing the handle doesn't hit and interfere with the handle on the clamp. Then double check your marks and make sure you've got it positioned where you need it. and then start with your saw and this flush cut saw does a really nice job of staying on the aluminum piece and slicing through the board and I just continue down the board you can see how we're making a nice 3 16 inch slice all the way through here and just be careful that the saw doesn't ride up on you and start to make the piece too thin continue on all down the length of the board and when we get to the very end I'll just kind of flip it around and start from the other side and finish the cut You see we've got a pretty uniform thickness. And now we've got our first side. Now from here you just want to drop down another 3 sixteenths of an inch on each end and make that cut again. And now we're going to uh, finish planing the uh, two side pieces. You'll need a small hand plane and a couple of clamps. Now we'll eventually get the thickness on this down to about 
uh, a little more than a sixteenth, more like a tenth of an inch. So clamp your two ends down at one side and start planing everything smooth. And I like to put both boards together and just keep them a nice uniform thickness. Okay, once you get that end done, just move your clamps down to the ends you just planed and finish up the other end. And once you've got that, just flip them over and plane the backs as well. Okay, now that we have the pieces planed, we're going to finish sand them. I'm going to start with a coarse 60 grit sandpaper. And I'm just using a small wood block as a sanding block. Just fold that up tight. And then just sand everything smooth and even, correcting anything that uh, might have gotten missed in the planning. And do both the front and the back side. And if you see any spots that are uh, unusually thick, just do a little uh, corrective planing and fix those. And then finish up with a 60 grit sandpaper. Then we're going to move up to a 100 grit paper, a medium grit. And then sand these and make sure that any kind of sanding marks or planing marks are gone. Now you'll also notice that the way that we cut the two sides, they will be book matched. Since we cut them out of that same stock of wood, we can fold them over and our grain will be pretty much a mirror image of each other. Now it's very important if the grain's going to show that we keep the book match in the right direction so that each side on the finished guitar will be a match to the other one. So I've decided which side's going to be the top. Put these two pieces together with clamps. And I want to take the plane and even these two sides out. You're not removing much material. Uh, you just want to make sure they're nice and uniform and straight. And now since I've decided these are going to be the tops, I'm just going to put a little crown mark here on each side.
and a couple of marks at the other end so I'll know which sides are the tops. And now I'm going to measure my finished thickness. I'm going to go just a little oversized and allow for some finished planing and sanding on the bottom edge as well. Throughout this uh, whole construction, you'll you'll notice a pattern that we typically cut things oversized to begin with, and then finish uh, planing, sanding, trimming to get it to the final size. Now, with my tops together and uniform, I'm going to clamp both boards to the edge of the table. And I'm going to take a coping saw and just trim off the excess wood. Again, notice how I'm staying a little off the line just to make sure that we've got room to uh, finish it to size. Now with the board still clamped together, the tops are uniform, and I'm going to take a hand plane and smooth out the bottoms. I'm just going to plane down until I've got a nice uniform straight edge along that line that we drew. Then I'm going to take some sandpaper and smooth that edge up. Now once that is done, I'm going to step up to 150 grit sandpaper and do a finish sand on these. So now we have our book match sides, finish sanded to 150 grit. Now to make the side molds, you need uh, at least, if you have something the right thickness, uh, as thick as the side, just one board would be fine. I'm actually going to sandwich two boards together. This is just some scrap uh, plywood that I had. I'm going to stack these four boards up I'm just going to take a few wood screws and I'm going to stack these four boards up and take the template and outline the shape of the guitar. Bottom edge is flush. Now I'm just going to take some wood screws and fasten the four boards together. Now if you're using just one board for the mold that's the thick that's at least as thick as the side, if not thicker, 
uh, you could draw the template out on each board. But since I'm going to sandwich these thinner boards together, I'm just going to cut them all out at once using our coping saw. If you have access to a band saw, uh, that would be really handy here, here as well. Okay, and with the four pieces cut, I'm just going to take a, a rasp or a, a wood file. Uh, this has got a curved edge on one side that's pretty rough on one end, sort of a medium texture on the other. And this is a longer um, version of that that's very coarse. And now I'm just going to go around the curves and smooth any irregularities out. Just adjust the camera here. You can see there's a, a little hump there in that curve that needs to come out. And with that plywood, the, the rasp can make a pretty easy work of that. And just continue around the, the mold, make sure everything's uh, nice and smooth. And if you have any uh, spot that's a little more than the, what you want to rasp, just take the coping saw and trim it up. I'm also going to cut some notches in the very bottom. Uh, this way, when we're going to tie some string, and I use string to attach the bent sides to the mold, and that's a good way to to uh, tighten it up and tie it off. I'm going to separate the molds, and you can see I've cut up some some of the excess pieces that we uh, cut off when we cut out the t shape. To get the proper thickness, I'm going to put some of those excess pieces and sort of sandwich them in between these two boards. And that way my sides will uh, be pressed against each side of the mold. I'm not uh, you know, doing anything fancy here. Just uh, make sure that the edges of those pieces don't stick out and put any pressure against the sides. Okay, I'm just going to fasten it all together with a, uh, just some wood screws. And two of these I'm going to leave out just a little bit. Make sure everything's lined up.
going to leave those raised to have a, a point that I can tie off the string to. Just double checking, making sure everything's lined up right. repeat that with the other side. Again, just make sure both your sides are lined up and square. Make any adjustments you might have to make. 